her face for her funeral? Please, you tell me what it is I don't understand. No, no, you gotta stay here, and you are going to talk to me. M move. No. Move, Bunga. No! Let me want to get out of the way. The only way I'm moving is if you make me. And I don't think that's in you. I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm just, I'm just not ready. I love you. I want our marriage to survive this, but we can't grieve separately. We've got to find our way out of this together. This is about us. I, I don't believe. Believe? I don't believe in God anymore. The morning, the morning before Abby passed, I went to to the hospital chapel and Bunda I prayed I, I prayed that the Lord would take me I prayed that he would take my life and not my baby girl and he didn't when the Lord is supposed to be loving and merciful where's the love in that where's the mercy and then I had to go sit in the church with those, with those people at her funeral and listen to them talk about God's plan for us. And all I could think about was, was I, I, I've been betrayed. God betrayed me. He loved me. I walked the walk. I talked the talk for what? And we waited, we waited so long to have a baby. And for what? To lose her? Where is the, where is the plan? No, and then I had to go to the congregation in front of the church and I had to preach the word of God. And I felt like a fool. Like a con man, like a fraud. I was standing there in front of those people that I was selling them a, a whole bill of goods. <laughs> then if they lived their life right, if, if they would be rewarded with riches. <laughs> Where's my riches, Bunks? <laughs> Where's my reward? Happy. <laughs> Fine, thank you. And look at you. You're positively glowing. Oh, thank you. It must be the, the sea air. Ah. <laughs> Ravenous. <laughs> I can smell those waffles all the way from my tin. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, yes, it is. Quite a wonderful morning, in fact. Thank you. Morning. Good morning. Freya told me you weren't feeling too well. I have some healing teas in my pantry. May I show them to you? Yes, please. Tell me when. A little more. Perfect. 
have some warm mint. I tried last season. That's always good. My husband. He's lost his faith. Well, I don't have a tea for that. I'm not religious, but I've always felt that faith is one of those things that even if you felt you've lost it, it never loses you. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. So, sit here. Well, who kidnapped Kira? <laughs> that Kira is retired. I can't be a media marble with no Wi-Fi, can I? Pass the X. <laughs> They're wonderful. I love the way you look. Thank you. Let me help you where I can. What's bothering you? Heavy digestion. I don't feel bad all day. It's just when I wake up, my head feels light. I get flashes of fever and I feel like throwing up. Is that what you had? Yeah. 18 years ago. Good morning, honey. You look rested. Do I? Well, not. Mm. Didn't sleep well? It's hard to sleep at all with the image of you pawing all over my grandmother on replay in my head. Evan? <clears throat> you know, you really have me going with all that talk about sacrifice, upholding the sacred Holloway name, and the first chance you get, you're out here going native, knocking knees with the hired help. That's enough. You apologize to your grandmother. Now kiss my ass. Kiss, I'll man. kick your ass, you little hey, hey, Get over here. Hey, 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 Everybody off. relax, okay? Take a deep breath and calm down. Okay? Excuse me, everyone. My room now. could you? I have tried. God knows I have tried. I have tried to raise you to be a responsible young man. And all I have in return is a spoiled, selfish little egotist. Well, it looks like you weren't cut out for parenting now, huh? This is the second generation you failed. Maybe you shouldn't have stolen me from my mother. Is that it? Is that your solution to everything? Look, you didn't have the right, okay? My mother would have raised me just fine. No, she wouldn't. She was an addict, Evan. No, no, no. Lots of people are addicts. You don't just get to steal their children away from them. I steal you. That's a lie. After you were born, your mother walked right out of that hospital to get her next fix. I never once looked back. You want to blame someone for all of your problems, then fine. You blame her. She is the one that abandoned you. And I did what she actually didn't do for you. And all you have now is just, you're just, you're hard-headed. You are spoiled, rude, and unappreciative. You are just like Melanie. You are just like your mother. No, Evan, Evan, oh, please. Evan, I'm sorry. Evan, I'm sorry. <laughs> These are the words I speak, love language, 
Last thing is so These are the words I speak with my mouth mm-hmm, I love you too Look at me, what can I do? These are the words I speak with my mouth And they're coming out This is hard for you, isn't it? She looked just like Vonda. Mm. My baby girl. Every time I look at my wife, I it just um you know, it just tears me up all over again. You love them both, right? Baby, you handle things really well, Freya. I'm proud of you. Thanks, Mom. So, uh, you need to pick a college today. No more procrastination. I thought we already resolved this. No, we haven't. You are trying to get rid of me. I'm not, Freya. Why don't you just, why don't you just come out and say, get the hell out? You will not speak to me like that, young lady. Want me gone? Fine. I'm gone. Freya! Freya! What's going on? I, I, I had a fight with Freya. What about college? Yes. I thought we were gonna let me handle that. You weren't handling it, Eric. Hey, um, I think I know what she might be. Can you talk? Yeah. You know the thing that most attracted me to you? (laughs) What? You were a deacon back then. Mm. It was your first sermon. (laughs) You were so passionate. Your energy exploded from that pulpit and washed over the entire congregation. My heart literally (laughs) stopped. (laughs) I knew in that moment you were someone I could never ignore. You still have that intensity. That's why I think this has been so difficult for you. You think you're the only one of us that abandoned their faith, but I question mine as well. Abby's death cut me to the core of my soul. But one thing brought me back. I absolutely had to believe that I would see her again. That's the only thing that gets me out of the bed in the morning, that... And how much I still love you. You want to know 
How I know God is real, Clinton? This is how I know. <sighs> only God can end a life. But only God can make one. Fonda. Abby's gone, baby. But her sister, our brother, is waiting for you to show up. What if I can't find Mom? You can. And you will. Because that's the kind of man you are. It doesn't matter what else you do in this world, Clinton. Can we talk? Yes, of course. She didn't want me. Don't say that. How could I not? Because if your mother hadn't been so painfully, tragically ill, she would have loved you. You're the best of her. You are all of the things that were so good about her. She would have loved you like I love you. Where is my mother? Like, like is she still alive? I don't know. And that's why when Jim said that she you were dealing drugs. It was, it was, I, oh, oh. I just saw the whole thing being replayed. Was, what are you, what are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, Evan, the marijuana. <sighs> that, look, it, it wasn't even my grandma. What do you mean it wasn't yours? It was this guy, Mark Whitten from school. When we got pulled over. I said it was mine because I knew he'd lose his scholarship. And I knew you could get me out of it. Evan? Holloway. That was idiotic, foolhardy, and presumptuous. You mean you're not using drugs? No. No, I... I'm sorry, Grandma. I know I haven't made this easy. <sighs> No, young man, you have not. Oh. Truce? Truce. I love you, Grandma, but I really do. I swear. This is part where you yell at me. Why would I yell at you? You don't want to leave your home. I get it. Well, why are you and Dad pressuring me to leave? Honey, nothing would make me happier than to have you here with us forever. I don't want you to leave, ever. But that would be selfish of me. You think this is the first time I'm having this conversation? The last time was with my parents. And I was sitting right where you are. I, however, didn't handle it with the grace that you have. 
There was a whole lot of I hate yous involved. But they were right, Trey. I needed to go out and see the world and experience what it had to offer me. And because of that, I met a man who loves me and whom I love. And together, we have this incredible daughter whom we've always considered our special gift. Growing up, it's going out and touching others' lives and changing them. And when or if you're ready, we'll always, always have a home to return to. I love you. Can we get down from here? Because mama don't weigh what she did when she was 17. <laughs> so. What are you afraid of? Truth? This. You. It's too real. And that's a bad thing? Oh God. Are you serious? Nothing in my life is real. The Kira, you know, that's just, that's just what I tell the rest of the world. It's, it's not the real me. You don't know the real me. And this fake me, well, she's about to reach her expiration date. No one wants to see a 30-something a without any underwear on. Run away, Raphael. You don't want anything to do with this. Maybe you don't need the whole world to love you. Just one person. One person that will make you the center of his world. Kira, can I ask you something? Yeah. Why did you say yes? You... You treated me differently. Not like I was... Just a name. And when I was around you, I, I felt good about myself. And I appreciate you for that. Okay, now my turn. Okay. Why? Why did you ask me to marry you? Honestly... At first, I thought you were just another dull, pretentious, rich girl. Okay. And then I got to know you. You're funny. You're opinionated. <laughs> and I like being with you. You never had any expectations of me. I could just be myself and relax. But I guess that's what love is. When you find that one person that frees you from all the BS life throws your way. I ask you to marry me because I want to wake up and feel that way every day for the rest of my life. Kira Jeffries. You're difficult and wonderful. <laughs> Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Are you sure? I was a real bitch. I'll pay you back. Knowing you... Pregnancy and childbirth will not be your finest hour. <laughs> yes. Yes. I will marry you. <laughs> I... 
wanted to let you all know I called the boat. It'll be here in an hour. I know this hasn't been the most relaxing vacation that you were all hoping for. And so if any of you want to leave today, I will gladly comp your entire stay. Seriously, you shouldn't have to pay for something that is not up to par. And Actually, I am having quite a wonderful time. I don't want to leave today. Me neither. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Laura, we don't want our money back. Um, but we feel we do need to leave. I need to get my wife to a doctor. You see, we, we just found out that, that we're pregnant. Oh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Well, I mean, I mean she's, she's pregnant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pardon me, Reverend. This lovely young lady has agreed to be my wife. Oh! <laughs> Finally! Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, it's about time. Congratulations. That boy plays pro ball and he can't buy her a proper ring. Oh, stop. Mm -hmm. Now, look, we really want a small wedding, okay? No press, no publicist, no bloggers, no fashion police. We just want to get married. Here. Now. Mm -hmm.